Welcome again guys and this is the third and the last video of the series of the penicillin biosynthesis and the penicillin industrial production and this is the final video in this video we'll be talking about the industrial production industrial production of penicillin okay so the industrial production of penicillin can be divided into three uh, small sections for for our uh, simplicity so let let me divide into three different sections first section is uh, the inoculum build up so inoculum build up this is very very important to produce the inoculum build up so it is called the inoculum build up phase you need to produce the culture or the the mold culture that we use to produce the penicillin right because that's the actual and most important thing that is going to give us the secondary metabolite now the second phase <coughs> is second phase is the growth phase growth phase because remember uh, penicillin is a secondary metabolite and, uh, and molds usually produce penicillin at the late log phase and, and the stationary phase of their life cycle. They generally won't produce this kind of antibiotics at the uh, when they are growing very fast. They produce these things when their growth is slowed down a little bit. Okay, so we need to consider the growth of the bacteria and that is the second phase but still now, still this growth phase, they still not produce any penicillin. Okay, and finally, the third phase is called the penicillin production phase, and this is the phase. This is the phase when the penicillin will be produced. Okay, so penicillin production phase. So these are the three different phases. <coughs> So if we look at the first phase of the inoculum build-up phase, at that stage we need to prepare the culture which we use uh, as the strain to develop the penicillin. And usually we rely on the penicillium chrysogenum, that's, that's the strain, so let me write it, penicillium chrysogenum is taken as this a species or as a strain for the development of sorry so let me <coughs> it is this one yeah penicillium chrysogenum as uh, the culture or, or the starter <coughs> usually this culture was prevent uh, or, or preserved as the lyophilized spores lyophilized lyophilized spores and then we take this lyophilized spores and we just put it into the medium which is very very required for the spores to come out into the vegetative cell growth and mycelia will start to form because remember we are talking about fungi we are not talking about bacteria anymore we're talking about fungi so spores are there now when we put spore in the vegetative media when they get sugar when they get the nitrogen source then the spores start to germinate and they will produce the vegetative body mycelia will start to form okay <clears throat> and once the mycelia start to form and the vegetative growth is there we need to allow them for several uh, time duration for their appropriate growth and that is very very important that's why the second phase came in that is the growth phase so this is also called the pre-fermentation stage or the growth phase where we need to put them and we need to put them in the agitator, agitation will go on, aeration will be going on because aeration is very much required during this, these processes. So aeration must be going on as so <coughs> aeration uh, will be there, it is required and then there will be growth. Now for the growth we need to give the, some food to this fungi and the food here that we put here, the food uh, obviously the carbon source must be there and the carbon source in this case is lactose we know that lactose is acting as a carbon source we need to put some nitrogen source also nitrogen source can be normal yeast extract we can also put uh, some other nitrogen source like soy meal soy meal can also act as a nitrogen source okay <clears throat> And during this growth phase, we need to keep the pH, a very important 
and not only through the growth uh, through the growth phase as well as the penicillin production phase throughout the productive cycle we need to keep the pH uh, kind of 6.5 which is uh, not so acidic but it's very very close and this pH is very 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 important uh, during the productivity okay so we need to keep this in our mind and also we need to produce the most important probably the most important factor and that is the precursor molecule the precursor and the precursor molecule except for that precursor molecule alpha AAA remember this alpha amino adipic acid which is the precursor for the production of penicillin won't be uh, produced so <clears throat> so the precursor molecule here is the phenyl acetic acid so phenyl acetic acid this thing we need to provide the phenyl acetic acid as a precursor molecule for uh, for their production of penicillin and once we provide everything there growth will be there so if I if I draw the graph of this production it will be very good for you to understand the whole process so if this is the graph and if I am drawing everything if I am drawing uh, the bacteria uh, not bacterial actually the fungi growth here the fungi growth you can see the fungi growth will be something like that stationary like that and the production of penicillin will begin somewhere here and it will begin to go like that you can see though the growth of bacteria so this one so let me just mark them this is the biomass and this line is for penicillin production okay you can see though the biomass is kind of levels off right but still the productivity of penicillin goes up that's the fundamental uh, thing of the penicillin production okay and during this process the sugar utilization if I draw the sugar utilization graph it is also very interesting the sugar utilization graph will be something like that this is the sugar utilization so let me write this is the sugar utilization graph so it, what it is telling it is telling us that uh, the sugar is kind of depleting during the growth of bacteria uh, growth of fungi here and then once the fungi is at the stationary phase or during that time this is a point you can see a point here this point is very very important where sugar uh, consumption is the highest it's going down sugar is very much depleted biomass is tight start to level off and the penicillin production is to is start to elevate this is the point of this is the major point for this process sugar is going down biomass is leveling so that's why I'm telling sugar is going down biomass is leveling and and our desired thing that is penicillin is going up this is the penicillin this is the sugar and this is the biomass and this is the point that I'm looking at here which is telling us how the penicillin uh, is actually produced this is the fermentation scheme of uh, penicillin production using penicillium chrysogenum and this is actually produced this kind using 1979 this is the time where we use penicillium chrysogenum <coughs> to produce penicillin okay so once penicillin start to produce and uh, we normally <coughs> we normally put this penicillin productivity or penicillin production at the temperature of 27 to 30 degree so it's not 27 actually it's it's kind of 25 degree celsius temperature the temperature will be 25 to 27 25 degree celsius to 27 degree celsius is the actual temperature that where the penicillin productivity goes the highest one and normally we rely upon uh, <coughs> for, for this process actually so this is uh, the actual process or, or theory how the penicillin production is going on but if you look at the industrial perspective we need to think that what kind of fermenter we need to choose now in that case you need to keep something in your mind that <coughs> this process is aerobic right this whole process is aerobic so you need to take something uh, some so fermenter where should be aeration or agitation and also or oxygen that means oxygen is required so you need to add oxygen agitation is required that is the proper mix mixing is required and for all this process there because uh, this mycelia are pretty long and thick uh, they are kind of covering everything up so usually people try to go for uh, uh, the top level fermentation but but in earlier times it was used as a submerged fermentation 
submerged or liquid submerged fermentation now for the submerged fermentation uh, in this process they usually can use air lift fermenter air lift fermenter now what is air lift fermenter if you want to know you can go to my youtube channel you will find a different video on different bioreactors and you will surely find a video on air lift bioreactor okay so you can use air lift fermenter there to ferment uh, this and produce this uh, penicillin there okay and <clears throat> the production of industrial uh, things can be of uh, batch production paid batch production or continuous production it was found that batch production works fine even fed batch production can also be done but continuous production is having certain problems regarding that okay so usually people fixed with batch or fed batch to produce penicillin that's another important point and and finally when the penicillin is produced uh, we need to cool the penicillin and the last point of the penicillin synthesis industrially is the product recovery right so product recovery now for the product to recover at the last phase what we need to do we need to cool uh, the penicillin or what is produced inside otherwise the further process of the product recovery may not be possible so for that reason you need to cool whatever penicillin is produced then we filter that and the filtration is utilized using or filters is if filtration is done using amyl or butyl acetate so amyl or butyl acetate is provided and this amyl or butyl acetate kinds of precipitated down all those penicillin that are produced and this production is actually this this product recovery is actually carried out at 0 to 3 degrees celsius temperature at the ph of almost 2 to 3 okay so the product recovery requires different ph and a very cold temperature to handle that okay so that's when everything is prepared we take it out then filtration will be done and then the purification and then we make a uh, make this uh, sample or penicillin dry then we can keep it <coughs> then we can keep it we we pack it and it is ready for the cell now I, I must tell, tell you an important thing that nowadays the most of the penicillin that are produced almost for more than 40 percent of it more than 40 percent of it is utilized for the synthesis of semi-synthetic penicillin and actually uh, less than 30 percent is used or uh, approximately 30 percent is used as a general penicillin medicine 12 percent or something or 15 percent like of this medicine that is produced nowadays is used as a veterinary purpose only 10 to 15 percent uh, only 30 percent kind of used in, in normal medicine for human being and greater than 40 percent of the penicillin that are produced are taken <coughs> for the productivity of semi-synthetic penicillin because natural penicillin is required for the productivity of semi-synthetic one right that's what's called semi-synthetic not completely synthetic okay so that's kind of it and i hope that's helpful thank you